Yeah. Ah, oh, so I think that's working. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, this is uh, this is working. Excuse me. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> ah, we're kind of pretty much. Oh, can't see what time it is. Yep, it's uh, it's twenty one hundred hours, so I think I'm pretty much on time. Better than the usual lateness that is my standard thing. So, good evening to all of you. Hope you're all having a, a great evening. I think I'm potentially coming down with a sort of a cold at the moment, so do bear with me. Throat's getting a little bit sore, but other than that, I'm all good. <laughs> nice to see uh, quite a few faces in the chat room already. We've got uh, Angry Dodge. We've got, or Doog, I never get that one right. British Noobs in the house. Letter, Sky Stalker, Booty Yearn. Uh, who else? Marco420, hope you're all okay. Yeah. Awesome. Alexa. Captain Meets Adventures is in the house. Aletta, I think I just said that. Uh, yeah, it's all good. Angry Dog says, you took my recommendation, you plugged the mouse in. Yes, I certainly have. This is one actually I reviewed a while back. This is the uh, Game Max Strike RGB mouse. And actually, it's quite nice. It's a very, very cheap mouse, but it seems to do the job. Uh, Nova's in the house. Hey, from Canada. Good evening, Canada. Good evening, uh, wherever you are, all around the world. North and South, East and West, all those kinds of places. And for those of you to tune in from outer space, you never know, they might watch this on the space station. Zero gravity, it'd be interesting. British Noob says, anyone else getting audio issues or just me? Nope, I always sound like this. Although saying that, today has been a, a bit of a nightmare as late this afternoon. Google IO has had some service issues, so that's affected things like obviously live streaming, um, other are things like Discord, that's gone a bit tits up, for want of a better word. Um, yeah, it's been, oh, Facebook. Facebook was having issues earlier where you couldn't like things or you couldn't comment on things, so that's all a bit weird. But hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully you're all good. So, yeah, I think, yeah, we're all good. So, how has everyone's week been? Our week's been uh, pretty hectic. Yesterday, we went out on our Christmas festive meal and drinks, so, was feeling a little bit worse for wear today. We had one of our clients around today to pick up their PC, which I finished, and I had to finish off most of it this morning, and then do a setup, which was quite fun with a bit of a hangover. But we've all done it. What is she doing? It's really cute. What is it? Shh. Sorry, do excuse me. Personal issues with the family. <laughs> ah, dear. Where was I? Skystalker says, Kath sounds like she has a cold. Kath's always got a cold. She's always a bit sniffly, aren't you? Oh, Not poor really. Kath. Send her some lemon sip. <laughs> so this week's videos, if you've not watched them already, this week we did the tailgate struts on my BMW E91. That was a bit of fun and almost smashed my head in on the tailgate. That was a great move. Um, Facebook message requests and how to find them. What a weird thing that is. How in this day and age can you not have a simple interface where the whole point of Facebook is to have friends and messages and to communicate. And they put it in such a daft place. So hopefully that video's helped one or two of you out. Uh, also, we did the video for the £800 gaming PC, which I was asking for your uh, recommendations, changes. Basically, it was what I would do if someone wanted to buy a gaming PC for £800. And we had a lot of feedback on that. Some of you wanted to change uh, the graphics card, maybe put a smaller SSD in there to put more money into the graphics card, which I totally get. Um, my version was really more designed for, probably I was thinking more video editing and gaming rather than just flat out gaming. So probably my mistake there, I should have clarified that a little bit. Uh, but anyway, it was nice to hear some of your comments and see what other drives you would use. Some people have uh, commented about they would possibly avoid the TC Sunbow drives and some of the other cheaper or uh, mass manufactured Chinese drives, which seem to be flooding the market on Amazon, etc. at the moment. They do seem to be really good value for money, but at the moment, you can get some really cracking deals for things like um, the Corsair drives, things like that, NVMe drives. At the moment, there's only about a 20 pounds difference between a one terabyte SSD and a NVMe drive. Although some of the NVMe drives aren't actually NVMe drives, they look like it, but they're actually just M.2 SSDs. So, Similar kind of speeds, you're looking about sort of 560 read-write, whereas the SATA versions of them generally tend to be a little bit slower, uh, even though essentially they are the same technology. 
normally they're around about the sort of 500, maybe 550 transfer speed. So you do get a little bit more for your money, not a great deal. So I do stand by my, uh, my recommendations there. I probably would still go with a two and a half inch SSD just to save a bit of money and to get a bit of capacity. But again, for gaming, you might want to have a smaller SSD and then have a larger like two terabyte drive in there to put all your games on. But again, PC, as I said actually to Skystalker in one of the comments, essentially that is the beauty of PC building. Someone may have an idea, somebody may have a different idea. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's just whatever fits your budget and what you want to do with the system. So it's all good. But anyway, it was really nice to see all of your comments in there and see what you're trying to do. I'll just read through some of these comments. Oh, Glenn's in the house. Now, Glenn is, Glenn is our client. We came around today for a PC, someone we've worked with for years. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, he's actually done some acting as well on British television, so sometimes you can actually see him on TV. Um, but yeah, we built a PC for him, and he's actually using... <laughs> he's actually been using his new PC that we built him, and he's watching the stream tonight on it, hopefully. And he says that... The new PC is running like a dream, and he's had about 10 people knocking on the door about the new disco in the house. <laughs> it's good, it's good. So I'm glad that's all worked out really well. It is actually fantastic to catch up with Glenn, and we spent about two or three hours going through the system, having a chat and setting it up to his liking, setting up his email, all that kind of stuff, which is what we do here. Not only do we make videos and uh, do tutorials, we do actually build PCs for people as well. So if you're one of those people who wants a PC built, Feel free to drop us a message, either email to me or Kath uh, on Facebook, Messenger, whatever you want to do, even Discord. And if you want to talk about having a PC built by Mike's Unboxing, then you're more than welcome to do so. I don't charge any extra for it, literally charge you for the parts. I may make some videos out of the parts that are being built, but other than that, the service is completely free. So if you want to do it, entirely up to you. Yep, yeah, Kath says she'll also throw in a cup of tea. And actually, it was really nice of Glenn. He did pop over, and as a thank you, he did bring some flowers for Kath and a bottle of uh, rum for me. So maybe tucking into that later, although I'm st still suffering with a little bit of a headache from yesterday evening, so maybe not. Uh, Stephen Simmons says, Do you see the pics of my build on Facebook? Love doing it and want to do some more. Stephen, um, actually, I haven't looked at Facebook at all, if anything, at all. Did I look at it today? I can't remember. It's been quite a hazy day, but I will be checking those out. Oh, Kath says she went on our account, so I'll be checking those out later. If you want to, Stephen, what you can do is join our Discord and post the pictures on there so we can all have a really good look at them. That would be fantastic. The British Noob says, Mike, he is an amazing guy and he's really smart. P.S. Please give me the keyboard. I knew there would be an ulterior motive. And Angry Dog says, British Noob, I called dibs on it first. Now, actually, that's one thing. A lot of the things that we get here for reviews and unboxing and all that kind of stuff. Why did you have for it on your video? Oh, I don't know. About that. What is it? What do you think it is? Is that a sheepy? Sorry, there is a video or advert playing on this live stream I currently. For some kind of bloody toys. What the hell? It, when I set up this video, I had the word conspiracy in one of the um, <coughs> text bits because there were something we're going to talk about a little bit later. But it then came up saying this, bro, this, this video is demonetized or not suitable for all advertisers. So, okay, I'll get rid of the word conspiracy. But got rid of it and it still says the same. So they said they're not going to show video uh, adverts on this video once it's finished or once it's live or whatever. And Caps watching it and a video advert has popped up straight away. Thanks, Google. Happy day. Oh, dear. So anyway, what we're going to talk about today. Oh, Marco420 says, hold up, is there a giveaway tonight? Um, there, yes, there is, kind of. Well, there's an announcement and a kind of start of a giveaway. Um, actually, we might as well get straight into that now. So... We're going to be doing some unboxings tonight on the live stream, if uh, if that is okay with you guys and girls out there. There's four products we've got, uh, one of which I actually have released a video for already, but I'm going to go through and just do a very, very brief unboxing. This is for the MSI Immerse GH30 gaming headset, which we are actually giving away. So actually, if you want to, I'll get Kath to post a link for that video. All you need to do is put in the description on the video, I want to win this. 
Um, or are we going to do it on Facebook, Kath? Should we do the Facebook one? Do the face we know we do yeah, the Facebook thing is a lot easier. And actually, from last week's giveaway, when we did the Windows OEM keys, that actually worked out fantastically. So we got everyone's names, all their details, straight from Facebook. And we've managed to do that. And hopefully, those of you that won, um, I'm pretty sure the thing is the names are different on YouTube than what they are on Facebook. But anyway, so we had four winners, and all four have had their discount code sent to them to go and get their license key for free from premiumcdkeys.com. Which actually, premiumcdkeys.com did not sponsor that video or sponsor me saying it or anything. Literally, I promoted them. The keys that I sold, I got a small commission from, and that commission I'm giving straight back to you guys. So when the commission builds up and we've got enough money to give away some more keys, then we're going to keep on doing that into the future. So hopefully that is cool. Um, so you're going to have to put a post, sorry about this. If you put a post on Facebook for the giveaway, link it to the video or the GH1. Video, is it? Sorry, the it headphones, the GH30s. Okay. Anyway, so going on. Yeah, so if you want to win the GH30s, Cap's going to put the link in or we'll put it on Facebook and then we'll post the link. All you have to do is just say that you want to win it and we'll do the draw at probably next Saturday. I think that probably works out fine if everybody does it. I think that works happily. Happy, happy days. So, yes, we will be doing that. Uh, da -da -da. <laughs> right, okay, so let's have a quick look at these headphones. Now, actually, they are pretty decent. I was expecting them to be rubbish, I've got to be fair. Some of you have probably seen the video, so I'm not going to go too much into depth on it. But essentially, these are budget gaming headphones. There's no RGB. You've got a massive MSI logo on the side. But the cutaway, or the kind of the end story on this is, they're really good, and they sound amazing. For £35 in the UK, or about $45, I guess that is, or $40 in the US, I don't think you can go too far wrong with them. They're really lightweight, exceptionally lightweight, even in the box. Like the whole package is exceptionally lightweight and I even said in the video it feels like you're not getting anything for your money. But they just sound really good. They're not uncomfortable to wear. Some of the headphones I've had before, like the Turtle Beach ones, they were very, very heavy and you actually knew you were wearing them. They were clamping onto your ears. And I don't really go a lot on that. I prefer it to be quite lightweight and almost not to realise that I'm wearing them and just to enjoy the sound, which is what uh, this was all about. So yeah, really good. I actually don't really want to give them away, but I can't keep all this stuff underneath my table for too long because Christmas is coming and we've got to get the family around the table. So I need to get rid of some of this stuff. So giving these away, Cap will put a link in a minute for this so you can join it and uh, enter it and we'll post these out and hopefully you'll get these before Christmas. Comment. Yeah, same as last one, yeah. Like, comment, share, whatever. Yeah, so we'll post the Facebook page, like, comment, share, etc. And we'll do the live draw next Saturday evening. So there we go, that's the MSI Immerse GH30 headphones if you want to win them. Very nice, very like those indeed. And also if you don't want to mess around the giveaway and you just want to set for yourself, use the affiliate links, every little bit helps. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much it for that. Oh, that's nice of Glenn to say. Uh, he's just saying to everyone, Mike has built and serviced about three computers for me over the 12 years I've been friends. Uh, never had a problem in all that time. Even when he's uh, got frustrated with the computers and kicked them and I punched them. and punched them, yeah, I've lovingly put them back together and made it all good. We all get frustrated with computers, don't we? <laughs> Marco, uh, you viewers are leaning on your left arm. Leaning? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Some of you are saying that this, um, the stream's going down and stuff. Oh, is it? The stream not going well? No, nope, everyone okay? Is the stream okay? This is, I've got excellent connection, but this is YouTube. It's a funny old uh, platform at the best of times. Uh, so what do you want to do first of all? Do you want, should I go through and do some of these unboxings or do you want to talk about some of the news in the uh, tech community this week? Got a few things that we were going to talk about. So the first one is the new iPhone 12 and the rumors of what the what, what it's going to be like. Uh, there's also an interesting debate. Now this is a weird one. I'm not too sure where I stand on this because it is uh, a creator like myself 
obviously a much bigger one. So those of you that are aware of Unbox Therapy, which is probably the biggest tech channel on uh, YouTube currently, I think, arguably I'm right in saying that. Lou from uh, Unbox Therapy does lots of really good reviews. Um, he's been around a long time, massive amount of subscribers, loads of followers, but he's been kind of almost called out for doing some kind of shady stuff. So if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that as well. <laughs> Stream is good, okay, awesome, thank you. So yeah, that's something that we can discuss. Um, the iPhone, what's your thing? Oh, Intel, re-releasing old chips. The old Haswell chips are making a reappearance, some of the older G series, I think the G3240, if I remember rightly. Uh, Intel are ramping up production of the old 22 nanometer process. I don't know what Intel are doing at the moment. I don't think there's anybody particularly steering that ship at the moment. I think they've just got the engine going and it's just idling. And it's like there's been some kind of zombie outbreak in the Intel factory and everyone's just walking around. It's just on autopilot, just like careering around the, the sea with no particular destination and nobody in charge. It seems really, really odd how a company can go from being the stratospheric market leader to be in still actually a market leader in a lot of respects, especially for mobile computing and their sort of uh, intellectual properties, which are used all around the world. But they just seem to be completely meandering. They've got no clue what they're doing. It's really, really scary. Like AMD, when they were going through all the problems they would over the years with the Radeon uh, buyout or the ATI takeover and the problems they had then, for those of you who can remember as far back as that, ATI graphics cards actually at the time were really really good graphics cards and they manufactured and they were actually at the top of their game and and quite often them and nvidia were kind of TikTok beating each other and they would kind of level out but in recent years the radion group or ati group kind of basically sunk to the the depth of hell nvidia just rose up from the ashes and they've ruled the roost but even in all that time amd stayed strong, they've kind of kept their focus, they've carried on doing what they're doing. They've never looked to be like one of those companies which don't know what they're doing. They've always had a plan. The plan hasn't necessarily worked out, but they've always stuck to their goals and carried on with their roadmaps. And as most of you know, probably, well, probably I would say a large percentage of you watching this are using Ryzen chips now, which just goes to show how successful AMD have been in that respect. And hopefully they can be again with the graphics card market. But yeah, even during those kind of 10 years of the FX chips and waiting for Ryzen to come out, they never seemed to really lose focus. Yeah, they had a few ups and downs, but they always had a goal and they've reached it. But Intel seemed to be like just completely panicking and going crazy. Like, what is going on? What are they doing? But anyway, hopefully, um, yeah, Skystalker says uh, ATI, Canadian at the time. Yeah, ATI were, I think trying to think where they were based. They weren't in Colorado, I don't think. Someone's gonna have to post it. I can't remember where they were based, but originally they were... No, it completely uh, escapes me. Uh, Craig Pello, evening, evening to you. Marco420 says, I'm using Ryzen and Radeon. Yeah, I think uh, a quick show of hands, but let us know in the comments. Who of you out there at the moment are pretty much using Ryzen through most of your builds, or if not all of your builds. I can't imagine there's a great deal of you that are still on Intel, especially those of you that are kind of regular upgraders, because why would you? Um, two years ago, it would have been a different story altogether where it was kind of like, mm, do I, don't I? But in the last year, and especially this year, really you'd be not mad, but it wouldn't be a great idea to go and buy an Intel chip. Ability10 says, Lou always says I care about value products, yet rips off his viewers. So Ability is not sitting on the fence there one way or the other. Uh, Stephen Simmons says, Ryzen was something like 7 out of 10 on the best sellers on Black Friday on Amazon. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an amazing turnaround. Uh, I think only two, maybe three years ago, if you looked at the same list it, on Black Friday of the best sellers, it was pretty much all Intel. British Noob says, I'm on Intel, woohoo! 
Uh, in I think the British Noob, are you on a 7700K? Is that a video playing a game? No, it's still playing. Is that a dildo? Yeah, that's what it all is, I've told you. Oh my lord. That's well, your advert. <laughs> I couldn't get away from it, I was obsessed. Right, it would appear that for those of you that have already had it or have discontinued it or whatever, there is an advert for dildos playing on this very video at the moment. A letter shouldn't have skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> at least it is on calf, so I don't know whether she's been browsing for dildos. I don't know. It's, I don't know what's going on. I'm a bit scared. Uh, Skystore says ATI was a semiconductor technology corporation based in Markham, Ontario. That's what I was thinking of. Specialising in the development of graphics, process, unit, units and chipsets. Yeah, I actually remember back many, many years ago when uh, I'm pretty sure NVIDIA had a motherboard that had an ATI chipset on it. And also Intel used to do a lot of chipsets which had ATI integrated graphics on them uh, for the probably Pentium 3 generation, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, you would quite often see boards from MSI and Gigabyte and the such having an ATI onboard graphics on them, like the Rage or Rage Pro graphics were very, very commonly used in those kind of chipsets in the early days. British News on the 6700K. Okay, Aletta's rocking the Ryzen 7 3800X. Now actually, that's uh, another thing I want to talk about as well, but I've got a case which I'm going to be doing an unboxing on in a little bit, the Inwin Alice, which is a weird prospect, because it's actually a case, but it's also like an open-air benchmarking case, or um, bench testing case. So, Do I say bench testing twice then? Benchmarking, bench testing, it's the same sure. thing. You get the idea. Basically, it is a... I'll show you when I get out of the box, but it's an interesting proposition because some people want to have a case where they can do uh, benchmarking and bench testing and have it relatively open, but they also want it to be so that it doesn't look like a complete stack of garbage when it's in the back of your bedroom, your living room, or wherever it may be. So in when I come up with this rather interesting design where you've got an extremely open frame, but there are interchangeable fabric covers which actually ask act which actually act as dust filters for the case so you can actually have it as a showpiece pc but take the cover off and then you've got yourself an open air test bench it's a brilliant idea it's relatively cheap looking around about 50 pounds in the uk at the moment so it's very very difficult to get a test bench for less than 70 80 pounds here in the uk if you're lucky there's some really cheap and terrible ones on Alibaba and AliExpress, which you can pick up for a kind of 20, 30 pounds. But essentially they are just strips of Meccano, which you put together. They look horrible, difficult to use. I'd imagine they won't be very strong. Whereas this thing is super strong, very lightweight, portable, practical, all those kind of things. And actually I'm really excited to show you, but we'll, we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, Ability10 says, <laughs> Ability10 says you better check CAF search history. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Richard says, Intel still have a few good products like the 9400F and even the 9100F, but in terms of the platform, cooler, overclocking, etc., they offer very little actual value. They do, unfortunately. Intel, I don't think, have ever stood for value, in my honest opinion. Even in the older days when you had the Pentium 3s versus what would have been back then possibly the early Athlon chips, the very early Athlon chips, like Athlons and Durons, even back then, Intel never stood for value. Maybe some of the Celeron chips when they weren't particularly awful. Um, there was a Celeron 40, uh, 433 megahertz chip, which actually wasn't too bad, and you could generally overclock it a little bit as well. Uh, that was around the time when the Pentium 3 500 was around, so that was actually a value alternative, and didn't perform entirely awful. Although when the Duron processor came out very shortly after that, it absolutely stomped all over the Celeron. So that was game over for them. Uh, Ability Sensors, why is this stream category on education? That is a very good question, actually. And most of it is down to the YouTube algorithm. So for some reason, when I first started doing this channel, it was uh, how to in style, because I was doing some tutorials and things like that. Then I started doing unboxings, and then we went on to all sorts of technology stuff. 
and for some reason now it's been lumped into the education section I suppose because of the more tech orientated how-to videos uh, some of the kind of home automation stuff all that kind of stuff so how to I suppose there's not really a category that this channel actually neatly fits into anymore which in some respects is good it affects the viewing terribly because if you're not a niche within a niche views are really difficult to come by because they won't promote you because they want people to be onto a certain topic all the time as you probably noticed from your subscription feeds but um, yeah we're in a kind of an, an odd category which doesn't really exist at the moment but anyway <laughs> but it's just I basically know everything he just said so no okay he has what is education <laughs> yeah uh, Sky Stalker says the Drawn 600 was an excellent chip overclocked by 50% wow that's a pretty pretty big overclock yeah the Drawn processors actually were a, a massive jump in performance back in the day Sky Stalker says Mike you are more education stroke edutainment yeah edutainment edutainment that's a I, I like that that's good that works for me <laughs> I can't remember right okay let's have a look at some of these things and we'll <coughs> we'll talk about some of the other stuff in a little bit so um one thing that I haven't had well I have but it's not particularly good is a mouse mat now I've seen the mouse mats for sale Amazon basics I was thinking well I only need a basic one I don't want anything too nice but then I'm thinking well actually I do quite like my RGB and it looks nice well, luckily, um, our friends over at Adata, their XPG gaming brand, for some reason, they like what I do, and they like sending me stuff. So they've sent me over a XPG Summoner RGB gaming keyboard, which has got the uh, Cherry MX Silver switches, which have got the slightly less... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You press the button, and it registers quicker. So you, I think it's a one2 millimeter. Uh, press rather than your normal switches like your browns and your reds and your blues which are about a two millimeter press so essentially this registers your press quicker than previous switches also is linear fast etc etc essentially good for gaming but to go underneath that keyboard they've sent me a mouse mat so this is going to be potentially uh, the mouse mat please the mouse mat is potentially going to be absolutely huge now i've not taken this out of the box as you can see it's still completely sealed so I've not got a clue if it's actually going to even fit on the desk. But in true Mike's unboxing fashion, we're just going to have a go anyway and see what happens. It does feel actually very heavy. Considering after the MSI headphones, this does feel considerably heavier. But I've been always been fancied an RGB gaming mouse mat. And hopefully, because the Game Max mouse doesn't track particularly well on this surface, I'm hoping it's going to improve it a little bit. So let's have a look. Good evening to uh, MZ Memes. Welcome back. I know, you said I am black. Okay. I thought you said I am back. That's his abilities, Ryan. Welcome back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's some weird chat that goes on here sometimes. Anyway, this is. Oh, this is. Ah, that's why it feels heavy because there's a massive chunk of cardboard in the middle. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Let's move my phone. <coughs> hmm, this looks uh, reasonably interesting. Now, I've never actually used a, a larger size mouse mat, or do they still call them a mouse mat when they're this big? Is this kind of like a desk mat or a PC mat? It does say mouse mat on there. RGB gaming mouse pad. Oh, what is that? Oh, got a USB cable, so that's a micro USB. Oh, it smells, uh, smells like plastic. Actually, it's made with uh, Cordura, which Cordura fabric, from what I can remember, has got quite uh, nice waterproofing properties and all that kind of stuff and longevity. You do get some mouse pads, which are pretty much awful. And uh, yeah, they don't do very well at all. So this actually did. Hello. They wouldn't been here because the microphone's there. <laughs> so what do we get in here? We get a be a hero or an adventure or an astronaut, a villain, a droid, a healer, a thief, 
a plumber or a warrior. Whatever you play, we are with you every step. To cherish your GG's or help respawn and defeat because we're all gamers and this is our lifestyle. So hashtag game to the extreme and thank you for giving XPG the honor of helping your dreams with the absolute best gear crafted on the planet. If you wish to participate, well, participate, if you wish to participate in the next innovation, win prizes, leave some suggestions or just hang around with like-minded people, this QR code is your transport into our world. Hmm, that's interesting. And you get a load of stickers on there as well. It's kind of nice. I like that when companies actually take a little bit of time and effort to kind of welcome you and to get you involved in them. Arctic so we've got, oh, we've got instructions. Yeah, Arctic trying. Yeah, Arctic when they uh, send out reviews and mostly some of their products as well, they send out gummy bears to win your affections, which which works for me. So this is pretty massive. So this is the GamePad XL. You could use it as a bath mat. <laughs> it might actually double up as a decent shower mat or bath mat. That is pretty big. So measurement wise, um, I haven't got my tape measure, have I? Where do I have my tape measure? Oh, it's like there, Kath. Where? On top of my desk, if you wouldn't mind. Are you sure? So let's uh, try and plug this in. Are you sure all this? Sorry about this, Kath has been distracted by chocolate. Kath, my nibbles no less. Do you want some? Oh no, I can't chew on, oh, I suppose I could. Right, we've got a nice braided cable. Bye. Where's your tape measure On top of the desk. Right, so we have to plug this into the micro USB, like so, and plug this into here somewhere. <gasps> oh. Bye. Bye. And there we go. I don't know if you can, can you actually see that in the it's been folded up for too long, isn't it? But yeah, it's got a really nice kind of uh, electro, whatever it is, illuminant. That starts to clean out. Okay. Uh, hey Google, turn off the studio lights. Thank you. So now hopefully you can pick that up. So at the moment it is that pulsing? No, static at the moment, isn't it? So you can just might see that around the outside edges, unfortunately where it says mics unboxing, which is not good. So there's a little button there on the top, so we'll press that. And that changes the color. Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that. It's a little bit brighter over this side. That must be uh, fiber optic, because it's quite bright in that corner. It's a little bit duller over in that corner. Let's see what else we get. Press it again, so we're going to get another colour. Um, there's quite a nice bright green, yellow, red, purple, or violet. And then we get the pulsing colours. Oh, what is RGB, the one that chases all the way around? Is that not in there? No, it's not. Oh, that's a shame. So I flashed through colors. Let's have a look in the instructions to see what I'm missing out on here. Uh, RGB lighting effect. There are two lighting strips on the mouse pad and blah, blah, blah. Step one, double click the control button to select the light strip. You can select both lights. Lighting effect, white, blue, indigo, green, yellow, red, purple, cycle, breathing. So it says there's two strips in here. How is there two strips in here? Double click the control button to select the light strip. So. Ah. Ooh. So that is doing, is that doing the, yeah, that's doing the color fade now. I think. Yeah, it's pink, white and stuff on one side. 
Moving on. Yeah. Yeah, it is changing colour, isn't it? So you have two it's different colours. Is that cycling? I'm really confused. That's not the easiest of things to set up. That's, that's both. That's that one. How do we get it to cycle through? You'd think this would be easy with one button. Oh well, you get a general idea. That's a, it's a nice surface actually. It tracks really well. Sky Stalker says it should have a chasing effect. Mine does. Yeah, where is it? Come on, where's the flashing effect? So that's both. Right, we'll have to look at the manual at some point. No chase effect. No. Still, it actually looks really nice and the, the texture is really good. One thing I don't like about XPG stuff is they always put their logo actually somewhere in massive and it's red. So if you've got a specific kind of build going on, it's really difficult to color match. And if I put the other camera on, hopefully, uh, webcam, there we go. So you can see now. Well, you can because this Logitech cameras are rubbish. There you go. It's quite nice, but that red really does stick out like a bit of a sore thumb. Anyway, that kind of works. It's not too bad. And you can see actually it's a really nice, smooth surface on that. Pretty good. Oh, that's a desktop. Don't want that one. <laughs> Schoolboy error. Hey Google, turn on the studio lights. Eventually, thank you. There we go. Did I say that? <laughs> I don't know what you said. Uh, Ability Sen says, "What? Which mic? Which mic is Mike Watch wearing? What watch is Mike wearing? Uh, it, that is the Apple iWatch Three, the larger one of the two, 42 mil, I think." Uh, Glenn says, "Even all Discord's still dying for you guys. Yeah, it's not working particularly great." Uh, Scottsdale says, my mouse pad is a grey world map. Love it. It has the same colour effects as yours. It's actually quite nice. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to measure the map. I I see what the dimensions are. So if you're thinking about getting a mouse map, this one is uh, three foot or 91 centimetres. Yeah, 91 centimetres. And depth wise is just uh, 16 and three quarter inches or about 42.5 centimetres, or 425 mil. So it's actually a, quite a big mouse mat. But actually, it's, it's quite nice, I quite like that. The mouse tracks much, much better. That's, uh, oh yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, that's much smoother. So I'm gonna have to try some Counter-Strike Source on this later and see if it improves my gameplay. Although I doubt it because not a lot can improve my gameplay. Although saying that, if I use this mouse mat with this mouse and the MSI gaming headset in Counter-Strike Source, I would put money on it that I would get a better kill rate against using a mouse on a standard surface with just speakers. Because your perception is going to be better because you're going to hear where your enemy is walking. You're going to hear the rustling or the, the crunching of the kind of feet on the gravel. You're going to have a better reactions time because your mouse and your mouse is going to track better because you're on a gaming pad. That all makes sense. Do you think that's a video? Do you think it's actually worth testing to see if I can replicate if my gaming is going to be better with gaming peripherals rather than just winging it with a normal mouse on a table? I think that's not a bad idea. I might have to try that, even if it's just from my own morbid curiosity. 
Captain Me's Adventures says, it's like QVC, is that Mike's unboxing measuring tape? No, this is actually, this is a great device. Now, I've never unboxed this, but I, I really should have done. So no, this means, is, it is like your special measuring tape for yours. No, it's not my special it one, is. no. It's kind of special, but it's got a laser in it. So a laser pointer, which uh, no, don't make I might. Jump I might blast the thing, you can probably see that. So you've got a laser pointer, so when you put it on to do measuring and stuff, the laser goes along, you can't really see it in this light because it's quite bright in here, but it gives you a laser level. It's also got a spirit level built into it, both ways. It's got a measure into it. Um, it's got a tape measure, which you can lock as well. It's just like a really great little tool. And there's a magnet as well at the bottom um, for something, I can't even remember what the magnet was for, but yeah. It's it stick on just, things. I think it sticks on, yeah, I think it was magnetic, so it would stick on like metal walls or whatever it may be. But it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. That was given to me by uh, my brother-in-law, actually. Lee gave us that, didn't he? For Christmas one year, I think. Oh. Or he was given it and he didn't want it, so he gave it to me. That was it. Calf's brother was given it by someone for Christmas, and he's like, oh, I got one of those, don't want it. And just handed it to me. It's like, oh, thank you very much. Skystruck says, Mike, you have to do a video where you play with some of your subscribers. I'm pretty sure there's laws against that. Oh, in a game. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Actually, for those of you that play CSGO, um, I'm on Steam. You can find me easy enough. Mike's Unboxing is my, uh, my tag. Just find me, friend me up, and over the Christmas period, when we've got a bit of time off, we'll definitely organise a match and see, uh, see what everyone's like. British Noob sounds like he might be up for that challenge. Skystalker will probably up for that challenge. British Noob says, I consent. Oh, that's right, that makes it legal, so we can play with Noob. Awesome. <laughs> okay, right, that's enough of that. Let's not talk about that before Copa come down here and turn off the channel. So let's have a look at this keyboard now. Actually, am I gonna have enough room? I should have, because this uh, is a massive mouse mat, isn't it? And me being a left-hander, that is gonna work out quite well. So, XPG Summoner keyboard. Now, this is using an American setup, so my typing accuracy is gonna be absolutely horrendous. Uh, I have actually taken this out of the box already and had a small play. So, this is what you get. So, XPG Summoner, RGB gaming keyboard. Uh, it's RGB lit, backlit, as you would expect. There's a nice wrist rest in there, actually, which is pretty comfortable. Um, what's that say on there? Oh yeah, it's got a media control. Now one thing that I hate about keyboards is not having handy media controls. I absolutely detest having to press a function button and another key to turn up volume, turn down the volume, or any crap but that. It is really, really inconvenient. Even internet keyboards of 10, 15, 20 years ago even, like the Microsoft internet keyboard, which is a, a great keyboard, may it rest in peace. That was a great keyboard. It had the extra keys, even the Logitech keyboards of the time, you had dedicated volume up, down buttons, play, pause, internet, home buttons, all those kind of things. I really miss out on those kind of things. I think they should still have them on keyboards. What do you guys think? I think most of these keyboards now, they're just too minimalist. There's so little going on. You've got all these function keys, but where are the dedicated function keys? Media, volume, all that kind of stuff. So what I like about this one, same as I do with the Rio Toro, the Ghostwriter RGB, is you've got a really, really nice tactile roller for the volume control. So you can control your volume really quickly just by rolling it, which I don't know why, it just, it's very satisfying to do that. I guess it's like a rotary control on an old stereo or hi-fi or whatever. It's just always a nice feeling to have a good weighty volume control dial, which you could just manually crank in rather than having some kind of digital button where you click, 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 and there's no kind of um, choices. It's like one to 10, one, two, three, that's it. No one and a half, no one and three quarters or nothing. And I find that actually with my iPhone, when you're adjusting the volume, it's like, well, when I'm listening to it late at night, one click is too, too quiet, two clicks up is too loud. I just want that 1.5 clicks. That's all I want, but you can't do it. But with this, with the rotary manual or analog control, you can dial in your volume exactly how you want it. And that, for me, 
is a massive selling point. I know it's a stupid thing to say because it's a gaming keyboard and there's far, far more interesting or beneficial things on this keyboard than that. But for me, that rotary dial for the volume is an absolute winner. But anyway, let's have a look what else we've got in the box. So USB pass-through you've got, which is really nice to have. Again, if you've got a PC which maybe is limited on USB ports and you've got your digital camera or you've got your flash drive or whatever it is, you just want to quickly plug something in. It's really nice to have it on your keyboard, especially if you've got like a larger desk and you've got like this whole kind of setup and your PC is kind of tucked away or a bit further back. Why have the wear and tear on your USB ports on your computer, which are really difficult to replace if they damage, easier to plug into a keyboard. Uh, this one's also got replaceable keycaps. You get nine of them included uh, for your gaming, which this is actually another downside of this keyboard, which going back to the red logos on here, this has got red replaceable keys, which I personally think, well, for some it, it may be good. I guess they're a brand, they're a company, they're trying to tie it all in together. Color coded, it's, I don't like it. I want to choose the colors. Anyway, so same deal game, we get our uh, XPG stuff, welcome to XPG, it tells you how all the keys work, etc. You get a key puller and you get your, uh, what have you got here? So you've got up, down, left, right and WASD keys and also there's a replacement for the Windows key which has got the XPG logo on. I'll do a full review of this a little bit later on in the week but I just wanted to do a quick unboxing so you can see what it's like. What's your Steam name? Uh, Steam name is Mike's Unboxing. So the keyboard itself, that's never going to stay on there. Um, so there's the keyboard. Now again, XPG, A Data, they don't like using plain black in their designs. So this has got like a, a really nice kind of gunmetal silver. It's like a dark, I wouldn't call it charcoal, but it's, it's definitely a hint of silver, which is pretty much similar to what was going on in the case that we reviewed a little while back but it actually feels really sturdy. It's a metal interior, plastic shell, nice clicky switches, and you get the usual really nice braided cable in. You've got two USB connections on there, one for the pass-through, one for the keyboard itself. And this is where I run out of USB ports on my laptop. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. This is, it shouldn't be this difficult to get twist sticks off of here. Come on. I always have to get the tweezers out and go verge on your ass. I'll keep those for later. So, yep, yeah, this is where I run out of USB ports now. No, I don't. Yeah, I do. That's HDMI. Right, we're gonna have to lose the RGB, I'm afraid. But, ah, that's good, because if I plug this in, and plug that one in there. So now you're thinking, oh, Mike, you've lost your USB ports. No, I haven't, because I can plug this into the back of here, and hopefully it won't give me magic smoke. No magic smoke, look at that, it's all working. Happy days. So. There's the keyboard. It's a uh, RGB, it's got per key lighting on it. You've got lighting effects, all the usual stuff, but what does it for me is this wheelie button here. Oh, it's got a, quite a nice little notch to it. And let's see one. Yeah, that's quite a, quite a precise. So on the Windows volume control on the desktop, it goes from naught to 100. So every little notch is 2%, so 50 increments on the volume, which isn't isn't brilliant. You'd Ideally, you'd want it in 1% uh, notches. And I don't think that's gonna be programmable any other way. But also as well, you've got the mute button on the side, which has got a quite a nice tactile click to it. It doesn't light up though, which I would have liked to have seen. I would like to have seen that light up so you know that it's muted. So if you're like doing something, you're like, where's the sound? It would have been really nice to have a mute illumination on there. But you do have caps lock or number lock button. So number lock, you've got that white LED, which is nice. And also you've got the Windows key lockout. So if you do function and I believe it is F6, 
Yeah, so that's locked out and it changes color so you know that it's locked out as well. So now the Windows key is completely locked out. So there we go, happy days, that works. And it's got a macros, so you can set macros and there's actually five different profiles on here. So you've got player profile one, two, three, four, five, which are on the F keys, which is not ideal. Again, I would have preferred to have seen specific keys for the profiles, but again, it's keeping it quite nice, clean and crisp looking. So it's not altogether bad. And you've got feet on the bottom, rubberized again. And let's see what the switch is like. So I'm gonna have to reply to somebody here. So Captain Meets Adventure says, Mike, can you give us a rendition of Last Christmas? Uh, that is actually quite nice to type on. You, I'm not sure if you're picking up the clicks on there, but it actually does feel quite nice. And this, like I said, is an American layout. So for me personally, it's actually useless long term. So I will probably have to end up doing this as a giveaway as well at some point. So if anybody's after an XPG summoner keyboard and you're in the American region, or you can type with an American keyboard, and uh, let me know, and we'll do some sort of giveaway. Wow, you want me to sing the fairy tale of New York, or New Work? The f Him to sing fairy tale of New Work. Noob, your British is getting worse. Uh, let's see, let's type something else. Here. So, uh... That's not worth. <laughs> My typing is horrendous. So if any of you can work out those lyrics, <laughs> best of luck. Oh dear, that is awesome. Yeah, it was Little Drummer Boy. <laughs> Were you actually typing uh, anything? I was actually typing, yeah. Uh, so I have to say that is one loud keyboard. Um, I don't think this, the keys themselves are loud. I think the where it bottoms out is quite loud. Yeah, that's my knuckles dragging on the floor. Neanderthal Mike. Uh, right, I should change the colours on this. So, if I'm rightly... Fairy Tale of New York, British New Book, do uh, No, I'm not doing it. I refuse. Well, that's what, that's what we want. We want our RGB colour flow. So that's what we all want, isn't it? the RGB color flow. It actually looks quite nice. You've got, like I said, you've got the removable keys as well. And inside there, you've got your lovely Cherry MX silver linear switches, which actually without the... Uh... Yeah, as you would expect, you can't see, or sorry, you can't feel any indentation in the switch at all. It's completely linear, so you can't... Yeah, there's nothing in there at all. There's no sort of tactile feedback whatsoever, which for some of you actually might be a deal breaker. But for me personally, I actually don't really care. But apparently silver switches are the way to go and they're supposed to be much better for gaming. And actually that is metal. I know I said earlier it's plastic, but I think that is actually metal. Where's the magnet? Is this got a magnet on it, hasn't it? Yeah, that is magnetic. So that, that top bit is completely metal. <coughs> And it appears to not be aluminium because that's not magnetic. So that must be either some kind of steel or whatever they make drinks cans with possibly, or even tins of dog food, I don't know. But it actually makes for a quite nice keyboard. Although saying that, the edges on there, because it is metal, it's actually not, I wouldn't say it's sharp entirely, but it's not smooth. They are rounded edges off slightly, but you can feel that it's metal, which again, some people may like, and it actually does make it really sturdy if you can see I'm, I'm actually trying to flex that really hard and it isn't it doesn't want to move so if you want a really sturdy strong keyboard then the xpg summoner is something you should maybe take a look at and also if you like the idea of being able to plug in an extra usb without having to sort of reach to your pc or transferring files on an sd card now i do this all the time because of obviously making videos you take your sd card out and then it's like oh where's my card reader where's this so you could leave your card reader plugged into there just Put it in, job done, it's all on your desk nice and easily. Oh no, I'm being... 
Captain Nice Adventures has sent us a super chat and I've just got blinded by the RGB. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat. Mike, sing a Christmas song. Um, British Noob says £70 if you sing the fairy tale of New York in full. Not that he has £70. Um, Christmas song. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. There you go. There's a Christmas song. Especially for Peanut and... Lewis. Lewis. Is it? And Lewis should probably be in bed by now anyway. Right. We're not... There will be no more Christmas songs. Actually, I'm saying that. I don't think you can sing Christmas songs because it's copyright. I think you do actually get copyright strikes if you sing a Christmas song. So Although saying that, if I sang it badly enough, which is likely, it would be so out of tune it wouldn't get picked up anyway. So it could be okay. But you could do it on Discord later. Yeah, I might do it on... <laughs> oh God, British Noob's gone there with a five pounds for the fairy tale. Of... I don't even know the, the words to the fairy tale of New York. Get the lyrics up then. All I know is you scumbag, you faggot, or something else. And you, you can't even say that anymore because it offends people. <laughs> Bills and coins says, oh, come on. Let me have a look. I'll, I'll find the lyrics. It's your most hated song as well. It is my most hated song. He's the only person I know that hates it. It's a girl song. The Pogues, Fairy to Love New York. Lyrics. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Absolute <laughs> assholes. <laughs> <laughs> no offence. Oh no, I, t I haven't had enough to drink, I really haven't. <laughs> oh god, here we go. I'm, gonna, I'm being, um, what's it called? What's the thing, calf? Bullied. Bullied, yeah, this is peer pressure. <laughs> British Noob says, did you just call me a faggot? Um, I don't think so. I th that is the lyric. But thank you for your £2 super chat. <laughs> Endorsing my work. Sing my face. Here is the actual lyric. Um, where is it? Tune. I can't do it in tune. He didn't even do it in tune when he sang it originally. Well, that's what you need to do, isn't it? It's the same as him. Come on. Yeah, it says there, and I'm quoting here from the lyrics from Google, so if it's on the internet, it must be right. Uh, you're a bum, you're a punk, you're an old slut on junk. Lying there almost dead on a drip in that bed. You scumbag, you maggot, you cheap, lousy faggot. Happy Christmas, you arse. I pray God it's our last. That is the actual words as it says there. That's it. We're not doing any more of that. I have not had enough to drink. Oh, <laughs> oh for God's sake. <laughs> Captain Me's Avengers, a hairy maggot. Pixel Bite says, how are you, Mike? Um, I'm being press ganged into singing Christmas songs, unfortunately. I'll get your Christmas jumper if you Sky do. Skystalker says, the way this night is going, you better start drinking. I actually, I probably should. Angry Dog says, bullied by giving money to him. I know. What a harsh world it is. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna get rid of some of this and let's get this case out before things get totally out of hand. I might actually have to have a drink in a minute. It is getting to be uh, one of those nights. So what do you think of the keyboard and mouse anyway? Let us know your comments. I am, I am actually genuinely interested to hear what your thoughts are on it. I This keyboard, at the moment, from what I can tell, retails in the UK in and around the kind of 100 to 120 pound mark, depending where you're shopping. Now for a silver Cherry MX keyboard. That appears, from what I can tell, from UK suppliers and even looking quickly on some of Amazon US, that looks a reasonably good price. The uh, Corsair K70, which is the kind of nearest equivalent I can see to this, is 140. So it's about 20 to 30 pounds cheaper than the Corsair, but maybe you like the Corsair ecosystem. And, oh my God, I want a refund because you didn't sing it properly. You can't have a, you're, uh, you're giving more money. That's the opposite of a refund. <laughs> Angry Doge says, I like the keyboard. I will give you my 
GTX trust keyboard for it. Yeah, that sounds like a great deal. <laughs> yeah, Bills and Coins says, Noob, the refund is not giving him any more money. Dude's got a point. Right, let's have a look at this in-win case. Now, I am... What is your thoughts on the in-win case? Now, obviously, I am slightly biased because I've got an in-win case behind me. Oh, poor old calf. <laughs> her poor buttocks. She's getting her exercise again tonight. She just wants to sit down and watch her dildo videos. Oh, crap. I just dropped her. Oh. I better have a look at this actually. This is part of uh, the uh, the keyboard setup. Oh, that's quite nice. Hey, oh, I'm glad I did take that out. Okay, right. There is a wrist rest that goes with this keyboard. And I thought this was just gonna be hard plastic, but that is actually the finest pleather. And it's, that's nice and soft. You know like the, the uh, that soft padding you get on headset bands? I'm gonna have to get this out again now. It actually feels just like that. So from what I can tell, this is magnetic. So you just, yeah, you just scooch it up to the front of the keyboard and, oh, that is nice. Right, so if you're typing a lot, this is gonna be really, really super comfortable. I wasn't typing for real then. Uh, let's try real typing. Yeah, that is much better actually. I do prefer it a lot better with that wrist rest. That is a nice wrist rest. Wish I'd have taken that earlier. Booty Earn says rum helps. It does. Captain Mies Adventures says Noob is going to be in the drunk tank for Christmas as he will have no money. <laughs> Stop Noob. Actually, yeah, the British Noob, um, for those of you that are interested in supporting our fellow creators. <laughs> right, British Noob's just give us a six pound super chat and ask Kath if you can buy me one of those phallic objects. I think he's referring to the, um, yeah, the things that are being advertised on the channel. Not on the channel. But... Not on the channel, sorry, yeah, I should make that completely clear. Uh, Mike's Unboxing is a family-friendly-ish channel. Yeah, saying that, if uh, Ann Summers or Playboy or something like that want to sponsor me, or Rabbit, if they want to put some sponsorship my way, I'm sure we can work in some of their products into our lineup. <laughs> Although, say, no, no, let's not do that. Let's not go there. So what do you think of the keyboard, ladies and gentlemen? I quite like it. It's a shame it's actually an American layout. That is the one thing which, for me, kills it off, because obviously I'm not an American, I'm not used to typing in the American layout. And if you can type in for like, how old am I? 45, so best part of 35 plus years on an English keyboard or British layout keyboard, it is actually really difficult to, uh, to make that jump across to the American style keyboard, which is a shame actually, because we do get sent quite a lot of these American style keyboards. <laughs> it would be quite handy to use that, to learn how to use them. But I can, so I won't. Stephen Simmons says RGB dildos. Where is this channel going? We are going into the gutter, head first. Which isn't such a bad thing. I'm sure this went in here better last time. Yeah, I've made a right balls up of that. Uh, difference between UK and US keyboards. Okay, so in the US, your, um, I've, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's true, yeah. I'll show you on the box now. So on the box, um, first of all, your enter key. So in the UK, we've got a full size or double size enter key. And uh, our hash key is actually next to the enter key, whereas you've got your comma key. Um, yeah, it's difficult to see, but so American keyboards have got the single height uh, enter key, 
So if you imagine the key above it on there, which is the uh, backslash. So our enter key is essentially the enter key and the backslash. The backslash is moved down to the bottom row. Um, also, you've got differences. So our at key uh, is next to the enter key, whereas yours is on the two key. So shift in two is at. Um, also, the comma key for the UK is on the two key. So basically those two are reversed. The hash key is in a different place. And it's, it's actually odd that the enter key, just the difference in that alone, is really off-putting for typing, I find personally. Um, other than that, there's very, very few differences. I think actually in the main layouts, if I'm just looking, tab keys in the same place. You've got a smaller tab key, ours is wider generally. Uh, caps lock, shift, control function. Ah, uh, yeah, we have an extra function key at the bottom as well. I think. Numbers around the same way. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. It's just that enter key being a double height. Because obviously you use enter all the time, it's really kind of weird if it's a double space, it's easier to hit. British Noob, thank you very much. Mike, this is for the delivery of the lights and I'll test the Ann Summers products for you. <laughs> well, there's an offer I can't uh, take up. <laughs> oh God. I'm glad Calf's out of uh, camera range there so you didn't hear one of her retorts then. That was definitely not PC. So Skystalker says, oh, that is really different. Yeah, it is. Uh... Oh, well. Bill's and Coins says, stop with the foul thoughts over when there is a time and a place. Now is not the time. Yeah. This is not the time. Bill's and Coins. I'm not getting into that. Hey Google, turn off studio light number one. Yeah. Google is actually working much better recently. Um, I don't know if any of you have experienced problems recently, but our Google system here in the UK particularly, I think, there was a firmware update quite recently and it has, seems to have caused more problems than it's actually fixed. It's made it actually quite, uh, quite unreliable and quite often Google would answer questions with some very, very odd replies or would just not reply at all and be completely kind of dead. So I don't know if any of you have noticed that recently. Oh, I haven't done a good job of this. Oh, we'll have an unboxing channel. British noob. Oh yeah, Skystalker saying, yeah, when you install um, Windows, it asks you what your keyboard layout. And actually that's something which, uh, yeah, can be a real pain because if you install, if you installed the American layout on an English setup or vice versa, when you try and put in some things like your password, if you've got characters in it, because of the different layout, you wouldn't notice because you would assume that they would be the same. So you try and put your uh, credentials in and it would be wrong every time, so you wouldn't be able to log in, which would be a real pain. Right, that's that all put away for a rainy day. So let's have a look at this case. Well, actually, I better have a beer first. Calf, can you get me a beer, please? Oh, that's just sat on me. I would, I would go and get a beer myself, but unfortunately, I appear to be in the middle of something. Let's have a look. So what is everybody else drinking tonight? Uh, Bootyun says, I love my Cooler Master MK730 with Cherry MX brown switches. I do like brown switches. Um, I've said it before pr previously, but the Rio Toro keyboard's got brown switches. I think my, I oh, know that's Otomu switches. They feel very similar. Maybe. Anyway, cheers everybody. Time for a beer. Mm. Didn't want that bit. Right, let's have a look at this case. So this is the InWin Alice benchmarking stroke open air test bench. 
And as you can see from the box, it's bloody huge. It's absolutely massive. But it's not. So specifications, um, model is the Alice, color is cool gray, dark gray. There is also a cool gray and orange version. Case type is a mid tower. Arguably it's a mid tower. I think it's personally a little bit bigger than that. Uh, materials ABS and SECC. So the main chassis itself is ABS plastic. The rest of it, the main motherboard too, etc., is all metal, so SECC. Motherboard compatibility, so uh, 12 inch by 9.6 inch, so that is your extended ATX. Also micro ATX, ATX, mini ITX, should you want to. Your eight PCI Express expansion slots. So if, um, if the mining craze was still a thing, you could quite happily get three decent sized graphics cards in here with very little problem. Uh, possibly even more with the risers and what have you. There is actually an option for a VGA uh, offset. So if you've got a nice three fan cooler, big graphics card, you can mount it vertically or horizontally, however you choose. Uh, CPU heat sink height, which is quite an important one for some, if you're doing some kind of benchmarking or uh, bench testing or whatever it may be, some severe overclocking. You can get a CPU heat sink height of 195 mil, which is absolutely huge. Most cases top out around about the 150 to 160 mark. I don't think there's, well, there's unlikely to be anyone else with a case that has got better clearance than that. Apart from possibly Aletta with her Lian Li, um, the, Lian, the Lian Li case, because of how big it is and how wide it is, actually has got some fantastic clearance on the CPU. Um, that might actually have slightly more clearance than 195, but that is a massive amount of room for a cooler. Even like the uh, dark rock coolers from Deep Cool, uh, be quiet rather. Hard drive bays, you've got three, two and a half, one, three and a half. Two minutes. Why does it have an umbrella on it? Why does it have an umbrella on it? Because you're not supposed to get it wet. Oh. It's, it's fragile. And this is the way up. And that means you can throw it around in all those angles. You can't throw it straight. You can only throw it on an angle. And I don't know what that means. What the hell does that mean? So that's something like stacking them. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. So power supply compatibility, PSU ATX 12 volt, uh, length of up to 220 mils. So that's a pretty decent sized power supply. Uh, cooling, three 120 mil on the bottom fan or a 360 mil rad and a 120 mil on the top. But because it's pretty open, then you probably won't need to anyway. So let's take it out of the box. Smart. That's right. Now this is going to be where I get an electric shock because this uh, it's majority is plastic and fabric. So you can try and get it out the box. Luckily it's not massively heavy. Oh, I can feel the static building up already. This is going to hurt. Okay, so let's take this plastic off. Hopefully that plastic is uh, good for you ASMR lovers out there. This thing is bizarre. I don't even know where to start with this. Uh, probably best to start at the top, I would guess. So the top comes off, you've got a plastic top. And as you see on the top, you've got the InWin logo in orange, which may not be to everyone's taste, but still. So the top, when it's placed on, fits in into the uh, provided holes, which is that way around. I thought it was universal actually, but it's not. It only go on one way. It's not very easy to see actually. Okay. So the case when it's uh, fully built, this bit on the top, you've got about an inch or so of ventilation all around the top edge, all the way around the seam. So this case is designed so that the heat gets pushed up from the bottom and just comes out through the top, which is natural convection, which for most cases is the perfect thing. A lot of cases nowadays, you have the air intake from the front or the back and it pushes sideways through, which is completely the worst possible way 
for removing heat or getting heat into anything or getting cool air into anything because air doesn't like to be moved anything other than its natural direction. So cold air falls, as you know, like when you get a frost or a fog, that is the cold air coming down and condensing. Likewise, when it's getting hot, you see the heat haze coming off the roads, like the tarmac or the concrete. And if you look at it in the sunlight, you can see that kind of haze coming off and rising up out of the ground. So heat rises, cold air goes down. So if you start with cold at the bottom, pushing up, naturally hot air is gonna rise out. Even if you didn't have any fans in here whatsoever, you would still have pretty decent cooling because it's all wanting to just rise up. Aletta has one of those. She puts her dirty laundry in it. <laughs> <laughs> Aletta says she's got one of these and she puts her dirty laundry in it. So. That's super goofy, yes. Is it a garbage bin? It is a very kind of almost utilitarian looking PC case. Now with this gray side on, this mesh, um, I'm not sure if you can see through it. You probably can a little bit. I can just like make it out on the front there. So you can see the plastic frame which is underneath it. So actually, if I take this off, you'll get a better idea of how this works. Like it, it is actually like a sock, yeah. So you take the lid off and on the top, you can see you've got this elastic mesh. So this is what keeps it all in place, keeps it taut. The side panel is, I don't even know, it's almost like a net curtain. So it's not gonna let dust particles through it, but it allows it to breathe really, really nicely. So the whole case essentially is open air, but like with full fil filtration. So if you take this sock off, Oh yeah, I forgot about a beer. Luckily, even though I do spill the beer, this is completely washable. Yeah, but you're not using Oh yeah, that's true, good point. So on the bottom part, if I move that out of the way, so you can see the bottom bit. So the bottom bit has got this more open mesh, which you're more used to seeing on filters and that kind of thing. So the whole entire bottom is filtered. This is where you're gonna mount your three fans. So 120 mil, 120 mil, 120 mil. If you want to, you don't have to. And then all the air is gonna be pushed through. So regardless really how you mount it, if you wanted to, you could have it flat like this, so to use it like a test bench or workbench, um, or you can use it in its normal position, which would be upright like that. But again, however you choose to do it. Cap's moaning in my beer, so I'd better drink it. Hang on. I'll be right back. Mm. Oh, that hit a spot. Okay. So, once you get Alice's clothes off, this is what she looks like in the buff. So this is great. <clears throat> if you have a beer accident or chocolate accident or some kind of internet accident, you know what I mean. Chuck it in a wash, job done. So what you're thinking? Well, this in a wash, I can't have my PC like that. My friends will come around and see my naked naked PC. Well, you didn't want to worry about Alice being naked for too long because they supply another cover. So you've got two covers included. This one's actually, uh, I think, a little bit cooler. And I might even make a T-shirt or a boob tube out of this. So, a tube. there we go. <clears throat> there is your moob tube sorted. I'll put it on later. Not me, on the case. But there you go, you can see what's going on. So from the bottom of the case, you've got this nice open area. From the inside, you've got your mounting area for your motherboard. This area is for mounting your SSDs or your hard disk drives. This bit here, we're all used to seeing that section, that is for mounting your power supply. So again, if you're gonna do this as like an open air kind of skeleton PC, once you've turned it around, you can see here, so your power supply is gonna be in there. You've got loads and loads of room to work with for cable management. And these recessed channels here, you could hide the cables in if you wanted to. Now again, because this is plastic, you can pretty much do what you like with it. So if you feel like getting handy with a Dremel, you can cut holes out of it. I'm actually planning to put some RGB stuff in here everywhere, but really kind of yeah, all over the place. I think it's gonna be really easy to do. Cable management is gonna be an absolute breeze because it's just gonna be so easy to hide stuff. It does look like IKEA storage bins, it really does. It's insane what they've done with it, really. 
they've made it so easy and so convenient that, like me personally, I would love to be able to do more bench testing on components and get a, have a dedicated test bench. But at the same point, I don't want a test bench which is going to be left open air or going to get dirty, dusty, damaged, whatever. So having it in this form factor with the cover on in normal daily use, protecting it from the elements, you've got the plastic lid on the top to stop anything dropping inside it. I'm really excited to build in this, I genuinely am. Now I did see today there was a deal on uh, Amazon US for the ASRock Tough X570 motherboard, the Tough Plus I think it was, currently $155, which is great value but it's not due in stock until the 17th of December. I have put one in my basket at the moment and it's on their kind of Amazon global store so you can buy it from America and I'll send it to the UK. So that is potentially what is gonna go in here. That is what I wanna put in here. So it'll be X570 motherboard, a Ryzen 7 hopefully, maybe a Ryzen 5 3600X, but we'll see what happens. But this is gonna end up being my test bench. So when I get sent coolers, hard drives, graphics cards, whatever it is, this is gonna be my default test bench. So I'm not gonna to have to take apart my other PCs, which I've been doing, which is a real pain. And it doesn't really give me the opportunity to test like would like. At least with this, I can put a motherboard in, have a generic setup, and I can add components to it and it's ready to go. So for me, this works out perfectly. So I actually really like it. You got all the usual stuff. The only thing you haven't got is your IO. The only IO you've got is this button. So you've got a power button, which, under normal circumstances would be hidden uh, beneath the mesh. But another thing you've got, you've got these carry handles. And because it is so lightweight, you could actually transport it around. So if you are using it as like a benchmark thing and you've got some loop going on for a couple of hours, you could transport it somewhere else, plug it in, do your job, come back to it, transport it back. It's really easy to do. Uh, on the top section, so this is the weird bit which some people may not like. So this is the top of the case. So this is where your IO is gonna be, your top cooling fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, your PCI Express cards are gonna be here, or you can vertically mount the GPU, like I said before, if you wanted to show it off. This is where it's all gonna happen. But the unfortunate thing is, because the IO is all at the top, you're gonna to have to plug in your keyboard, your mouse, your monitor, all in this top section, which for some people is gonna be a complete deal breaker. I, I already know that. And when I first thought about it myself, I was of a similar mind, but saying that, if you've got a test bench, then you've got to make some compromises. So with this on top, so you've got enough room there, so you've got your IO coming out the top, so you can route the cables down one side or the other. Again, not ideal, but generally if you've got your PC on display or something, you don't always see the back of it or whatever, so you could quite easily put the cables just down the back neatly, a few cable wraps, you're good to go. There is actually on one of the feet, we'll spin this round 180 degrees. So in this bit here, this is where your power supply is gonna be. So you have your power plug in there. So what you can do is you can route it through, through this foot, and then the cable will come out. That's the other foot. Oh, sorry, the other foot. So you can route it straight out of there, through that little cutout, and out through the bottom. So your power cable is gonna come through nice and neatly and not be obstructed. But I think it's a really unique and fascinating idea. I've never built in one of these and I'm actually quite looking forward to it. Graphics card wise, and even motherboard wise for that matter. So you've got all of this area here to fill with your motherboard. So you can put a really, really big motherboard in there. Is it recyclable? Is it recyclable? Yes, definitely. It is, it is pretty much a bare bone. There's not a lot to it. But as Sky Stalker has just said in the comments, as a test bench, this is phenomenal. You've got really easy access. Um, airflow wise, you couldn't ask for better, especially if you're doing sort of deep stress testing because you've got all of your hot components here at the top, your SSDs and whatever you're gonna be down here with your power supply. So you're gonna be isolating those components from your testing, so you're not gonna get slowdowns because of SSDs overheating or whatever. Even if you've got an NVMe or M.2 drive, which is on your motherboard, again, it's gonna be in this area. You've got your ventilation. The hot air is gonna be venting out anyway, so that isn't gonna cause any issues or problems. <laughs> the funny thing is, on this bottom bit here, you've got your kind of IO pass-through. 
because your yeah, IO shield's gonna be this side. So this is gonna be where your 20, uh, eight pin connectors can come through for your motherboard power. Uh, your 24 pin will be coming around somewhere here. This one here would be for your IO pass through for your USB 2s and all that kind of stuff. But because you haven't got any IO to speak of, only the power switch, that's the only thing that's gonna come through there, which is probably gonna plug in about here. So that bit there is kind of a bit pointless. And yeah, it's not gonna be covered up by the motherboard, so that is gonna be visible. But I just think it's a really fascinating concept. It's not massively big, um, size-wise. I get to use my tape measure, happy days. So size-wise, uh, side to side, you're looking at just a tad under 11 inches. Um, so that is 20, it's about 27 centimeters or 270 mil. Height from top to bottom with the uh, enclosure on the top, 23 inches or 15, just under 59 centimeters. So about five, eight, seven mil, but less than two foot high. So again, it's not massive, but for a test bench with the portability, the flexibility, and again, put the covers on and you don't really know what it is. It could be a wash basket in the back of your room, like Aletta said. Um, it's quite stealthy, you wouldn't really know. You could actually put this into a modern household with the gray cover on, and most people wouldn't even know what it is. They might say it's some kind of luxury waste bin or whatever. They wouldn't have a clue it was a PC. So. Yeah, exactly, for water cooling, if you were gonna set a water cooling system up in here, you've got so much room. So um, where you've got your mounting brackets here, you could quite easily mount a couple of uh, reservoirs on here easily. Um, again, if you took the central position, you'd have your CPU cooler there. Maybe if you've got RGB, put your reservoir towards the middle, graphics card coming down on this side. So yeah, you could put an absolute ton of hard tubing in here and make a really kind of elaborate layout for it. Skystalker said you will never use that as a permanent solution, so ugly to the letter on it. He's like, I already have some cool mod ideas for it. All right, so Les has got some ideas for cool mods to it. I think this has got a lot of potential. Again, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I totally, totally get that. It essentially looks like an unfinished product or kind of, the ridges on the side here actually, I know they're to give it added strength and it's all part of the way it's been processed. To me, it looks like a beer crate. In the UK, we have beer crates that I guess you do in America and other places as well, but. This, to me, does look like a little bit like a beer crate stacked. But then, is that a bad thing? I think it still looks pretty cool, and it is certainly unique. There's not gonna be many people that have got this kind of layout. And again, um, for a test bench or for an open-air test bench, it's, it's very, very different. Um, one thing I did notice, which isn't particularly good, is, um, the fan mounting positions on the bottom here for the 360 mil you've got. You can put a 360 mil rad in there, they've said. Um, the downside is part of the, the fan area, is that gonna fall off? Yeah, I haven't locked that in. Right, that's locked in now. So if I spin this round. So if you look at here, this, where the feet are, those areas are gonna be blanked off. So you're gonna have resistance airflow wise for the fans there which is a slight downside. Uh, the middle fan here, no problem at all, but the top and the bottom fan there are gonna have a little bit of resistance from these, uh, the feet area. Now that does come out on both of them. So if airflow is an issue, there is actually a cut out there and there. So if you did have it flat on the floor, you would still get a bit of air in there. Um, yeah, not ideal really for that. But in, in practice, I don't think it's gonna make a great deal of difference. You've still got three quarters of the area open, which actually is a lot more than you get on some cases when you've got the metal there, you've got that mesh perforation. Arguably, there's more restriction there than what there would be for these bits, which are completely open. So anyway, there you go. There is the Inwin Alice. Now, actually, I'll put our clothes back on. I'll put on the Inwin logoed one. But. Yeah, interesting proposition, this one, definitely. And for the money, which, like I said earlier, this in the moment in the UK, you're retailing around about 55 pounds. 
So around about the £50 mark for a essentially an all-in-one case. So you can do water cooling in it, you could do air cooling in it, you can do tests in it. Sleeper trash can. <laughs> Sleeper trash can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, there is a, there's a lot of options with it. And apparently they are going to be making or having available additional covers. So um, I'm not sure what the designs are going to be, whether they're going to be kind of um, superhero ones or... <laughs> yeah. Hey, consider I'm doing this live, I'm not doing too bad. It could have been a whole lot worse. Come on kids, time to get up, time to go to school, get your socks on. Dad, can you do them for me? Um, clearly not. But it is nice and lightweight as well, which is pretty cool. There we go. It's a bit saggy there. And that is all right. So there it is, the Inwin Alice Open Air Test Bench ATX PC case. What do you think? I like I said, I I'm a big fanboy of Inwin stuff anyway, so to be honest with you, they could make something completely awful and I would still probably like it just for the design elements. But actually this I can imagine this doing really, really well, especially in um, cooling challenges and temperature challenges because it is, it's pretty much open. And to get all that cool air coming up from underneath through natural convection, the whole layout, I think it's just a, a great idea. I am actually genuinely, genuinely looking forward to uh, building it. And I think with this cover on, with some cycling RGB lights behind it, because it's white on the outside, uh, to have that color change is gonna look really impressive. Anyway, there you go. That's the Inwin Alice RGB case. Uh, not RGB, fabric case. Oh, I haven't put those down. I haven't tucked her in. There we go. Is that the first dull PC you've ever had? There's the handles. You can even use the handles when it's got her, when she's got her clothes on. You can still grab her on the sides and uh, stick her on the floor. But how that does look insane. You wouldn't think that was a PC, would you? If you saw that, apart from the cables trailing out of it. That's the one thing I'm not entirely keen on, I think, the cabling. But anyway, as per usual, stay subscribed to the channel, click on the chime button, all that kind of usual stuff, and uh, you'll find out what happens with it. You do also get in it, you get a, uh, a scannable Alice card, which gives you the uh, instructions on how to build in it. You get all the standoffs included, you, you get some extra grommets in there for installing radiators and stuff. And you get some cable ties to try and tidy the whole lot up. But, there you go. Not too bad at all. Well, I'm going to have a slurp of beer and we'll have a look at some of these comments to see what you think. Uh, so, Alessa says, I saw that case during the last CES coverage. Do you know what? Of all the videos I, I looked online, I think Bitwit did um, a very brief thing on it. And who else did? There's a couple of foreign ones as well, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. But yeah, that's why I saw it. <laughs> Captain Meat Adventures. Captain Meat Adventures. Thinking of buying a PlayStation Classic. Has anyone got one? And has anyone bought I don't a, know where you are. a True Blue USB with games on it? No. Uh, no. I never got into PlayStation at all, ever. Mike's dressing on his PC. Skysaw says, so for a test bench, fine. I will never have that in my house. My kids would make fun of me. <laughs> my kids make fun of me anyway, so I'm, I'm all right. With yeah, with or without PC. Glenn says, the cover looks very nice. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, Aletta says, I'd have one, but I wouldn't look this, but it wouldn't look the same after I got done with it. Just like my girlfriend. Okay. This is the look my Captain Me's Adventures, Mike, you sound so like Trump. Pick her up and put her on the floor. Sky Stalker says, Wait, Mike, you might have a great idea there. No one else has done that. Do a video with the RGB. 
in a new build. How was that for the putting RGB in there? Yeah, I think it would look really good. Angry Doge says, I like the mouse pad that was extended that you had. And the keyboard was okay, but Bill needs it more. Oh yeah, but yeah, I see what you mean there. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the unboxing. So um, yeah, the iPhone thing. So apparently the new iPhone 12, if this is gonna even be called that, is gonna be a portless design. So essentially it's gonna be everything is communicated via wireless. So no plugging in headphones, no dongles, no charging ability. Everything is gonna to have to be done wirelessly. So that to me immediately throws up loads of alarm bells because wireless charging isn't everywhere. And the chance of Apple actually giving you a decent quick charge wireless charger in the box with an iPhone, I think you've got more chance of... Um, and AirPods. Well, it ain't gonna happen. Even AirPods now, they don't come with wireless charging. You can, they were gonna so, uh, start making their own Apple charging pad, which they did actually go into production, but then it disappeared off the face of the earth. So as it stands at the moment, Apple don't have, as far as I know, their own dedicated wireless charging mat or pad. But with my new phone, I get in headphones mm. with lightning connector, mm. but they'd have to provide, wouldn't they, AirPods with the phone, which would then make the price higher. They won't. So Cap was saying that um, normally when you buy an iPhone, you get a set of wired headphones. So if you were to buy a new iPhone 12, if that's what it's called, you'd think that they would supply AirPods with it, being as they're wireless. But I don't think they're gonna. How much are AirPods? Uh, about 150, 130. So they'd have to add that onto the price. Yeah, would have to be uh, da, da, da. Captain Meese Adventures, Mike, are you talking conspiracy tonight? Um, I was kind of going that way. I was thinking about it. Bootyun says health and safety will condemn it as a fire hazard. Angry Dodge says it's a scam. Uh, Skystalker says, oh, we are going wireless for everything and that's going to happen. Deal with it. A letter, that's controversial in itself. The only Apple product I like is iTunes. It's a good music app. I don't think I've actually ever heard anybody say that before. <laughs> that, is, that is a new one on me. Aletta is a yeah. brain person. Uh, yeah, Aletta likes what she likes and there's no change in her mind. But, but uh, iTunes for me is an uh, absolute abomination. It's so difficult to use in comparison with other apps that I've used in the past. Like my mum's ringtones last week. Yeah, trying to get a ringtone onto a phone through iTunes is horrendous. I think if you're actually just buying music and playing music like a jukebox, iTunes actually isn't bad. But if you're trying to connect iTunes with another device or family members for sh family sharing, it is a absolute nightmare. It's horrendous. The connectivity issues, synchronization issues, even just trying to transfer a tune from your device to your library and vice versa. There's so much DRM and all that kind of stuff. It's just absolutely horrendous. So yeah, for a music playback system or a jukebox, actually iTunes is amazing. And that is why it's done so well because it is so easy to just go onto iTunes, buy a tune, have it in your library, play it, do a jukebox, make a playlist. It is brilliant for that. There's no doubt in my mind that it is actually world-class in terms of that. But for connectivity and synchronization, oh, Horrendous. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, we're all going wireless. Now it seems a weird thing. I actually touched on this with uh, another YouTuber and Apple have always been into their kind of green credentials in saving the planet and all that kind of stuff. Whereas wireless charging actually is really, really inefficient um, you lose so much energy actually in the transfer from wireless because it's done essentially via kind of almost like heat. So you do, in anything you do energy wise, heat is always a, a waste product. So the fact that you're getting hot means you're wasting energy. So if millions of people buy iPhones with wireless charging, that is millions and millions of people 
that are wasting electricity needlessly. So for them, either they need to really, really look at how the wireless technology works, maybe they'll design a new standard which will completely screw the market up completely. Um, but yeah, I don't think it doesn't meet their green credentials as a company. So at the moment, it's just a rumor. We don't know for sure. So anything can happen. It may be complete uh, BS, but if they are going ahead with it, I think it's going to be, well, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, Les says uh, she doesn't like moonshine, but she only uses her phone as a phone. So yeah, that's, uh, that's probably a good way. Uh, British Noob says AirPod Pros are so good. Uh, and I hate wireless charging, so I'll never use it. Sky Stork says my convenience will always win over the planet. People are people. Do you know what? There was a, a time where IKEA were designing desks and they would have built in QI chargers built into the desk and shelves. So you could put up a shelf and have a QI charger built into it. They never really took off for some reason. Um, I don't know why. Yeah, my Inwin A1 case has got a QI charger on the top, so I just plonk the phone on it. Uh, it doesn't work very well at all, finding the hot spot. That is a problem with wireless charging. At the moment, the technology, you have to kind of wiggle the device around to find the exact place where it lines up properly. If you had it like they were going to design for cars, where you just drive into your garage and there's like a pickup point and it just charges your car battery, it would be brilliant. But we're so far away from that technology where you can just grab your phone, plonk it near the charger or on the charger somewhere, and for it to work, it's not going to happen. But Apple are well known for making the magical things happen, so you never know, they might do it. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the other thing we're going to talk about is uh, Lou from uh, Unbox Therapy. Now, there's been a bit of controversy, contro controversy that has happened recently here. Calf loves that. Bit of um, uh, a, oh my god, bit of ASMR head slapping. Yes. Um, moving on. So yeah, Lou from Unbox Therapy, who is also follically challenged like myself, um, is being caught up in a kind of a weird, con um, not conspiracy, well, kind of a conspiracy, I suppose, but also controversy. So um, a little while back, he did a review for a phone case, which was from. Patek, was it Patek? Patek, yeah, Patek. So he said in his video um, that he's tried loads of phone cases over the years and he's never liked them. They've always been too bulky or whatever. But the Patek case he put on his phone, it was razor thin, made from carbon fiber, a bit expensive, but it was very, very good. And he thoroughly endorsed it. Uh, long story short, fast forward to now, a couple of days ago, he released a video. He, as Unbox Therapy, have released their own range of phone cases, which look suspiciously identical to the Patek case, which he reviewed previously. Now, that generally isn't always a problem. People do copy designs, look at AirPod Pros, AirPod Clones, all those kinds of stuff. It does happen. But what makes it worse is the fact that the day before he released his video for his new case, he deleted the two videos on his channel that he'd done for the exact or very similar case previously. Is he the guy Linus so was talking about on the WAN show? Yes. Did someone ask that, does he? Yeah, Letta. Uh, Letta says, is he the guy Linus was ch talking about on the WAN show? Yes. This is uh, Lou from Unbox Therapy, who is pretty much regarded in the kind of YouTube community as being the numero uno influencer and unboxer. So he is the kind of the go-to guy. So for him to delete those videos prior to releasing his own video with a, a almost identical case. Now, the cases themselves, from what we believe or what, what has been kind of raised, is the case is just a, a design which has been created on Alibaba. Now, for those of you who don't know what Alibaba is, Alibaba is a kind of Chinese wholesaler. You can go on there, look at items, you see an item, you can quite often contact the manufacturers and say, I really like your design. Can you do this to it? Make some slight tweaks, maybe put a logo on, change the design slightly. They send you a prototype of it. You check it out and then eventually you get to the point where you order your quantities and everyone's happy. 
So it's highly likely that both Patek and uh, Lou got their design produced from the same company as potentially possible. Um, there was no collaboration between Patek and Lou on the case design, although he has actually said that he would have liked to have done that. He had some ideas which they weren't interested in. Again, regardless of that, the whole point of it is whether a shady practice to promote someone's product and potentially be paid for doing that, sponsorship, all that kind of stuff, then to copy the design, delete that video that you recommended the case saying it was the best case you've ever used, and then make that case yourself and then promote it, and then turn around and deny that he'd done anything wrong. It's a little bit shady in my personal opinion. If he'd have just turned around and said, yep, yeah, I like the case so much that I decided to tweak the design a little bit to make it work for us, and this is my take on it, and he left the original videos and even maybe mentioned it and said, look, we reviewed this, we liked it so much, blah, 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 but this is our new improved version, no problem at all. But the whole kind of thing of deleting the existing videos, he actually sent a copyright notice to uh, Patek to remove the video because they used subsections of his video to promote their product after he'd reviewed it, which I suppose you could term fair use using his image, being as they'd done a review. But again, he put a copyright strike in rather than actually ask him to remove it, just went ahead and put a copyright strike in, which if you're a YouTuber, you know that having a copyright strike against you is generally a bad thing and doesn't do very well for your algorithm. So let me know, what do you, what do you think? Do you think that's shady? Do you think um, he could have handled it better? I'm gonna have a look at the comments and see what you're saying. A letter, uh, not a letter, Glenn says, a carbon copy one would say. Now that is right, it was actually a, a carbon fiber or aramid carbon fiber um, strands which were used in the design. Now the, the original case, if you looked at it on Alibaba, you could buy them for around about 11 to $14. Now they're currently being retailed by both Lou and Patek for around about $35, $40 a piece, which is relatively common practice for that kind of markup. So um, he did say that he's put a lot of hot time and effort and hard work into redesigning the case to make it work for him. Um, from what I can see, the case actually is worse than the Patek one, because the Patek one had uh, magnets in it as well to help it hold on to the design, hold on to the case and all that kind of stuff whereas I don't think Lou's actually has yet. But it's, again, it's slightly shady. Um, also, as this has come out, it's also been unearthed that um, a previous giveaway that he had going, he had a video where he showed his truck, and in the back of his truck, he had what looked like hundreds of iPhone 6s, which he said in the video he was gonna give away to his lucky subscribers. This giveaway went on and on and on, and he was like, Make sure you subscribe, follow me on Twitter, tweets, retweets, all that kind of stuff. The usual kind of marketing stuff that YouTubers do to generate interest and to get the numbers up. And from what has been reported, only around about six to nine of those phones were actually ever given away before it kind of all got forgotten. So it's a bad time for Lou in general. He's kind of got this thing which has reared its ugly head. He did a live stream where he kind of tried to answer the questions and from what it seems actually didn't do a particularly good job of answering those questions and potentially actually just dug a deeper hole for himself. Along with the iPhone thing coming out as well, it's just not a good time for him at all. It's, um, and it's, it doesn't reflect well on other people who try in the YouTube community and you know, influencer community to actually do a good job and do what they say they're gonna do. Offer giveaways, do the giveaways. Now I'm probably slightly um, to blame myself with the uh, premium CD keys giveaway. We did kind of dilly dally about it with that. There was genuine reasons for it, which I obviously told you all about and explained what the deal was. But we've done that now, we've done the giveaway and we've got uh, four happy people which have all had their CD keys. So um, I did what I could and I was upfront and honest about it. I think if Lou had done the same thing and been upfront and said, look, this is the deal. I have used the design. I have gone about it in this way. I was wrong to delete the videos that I made originally. I'm sorry, it's, it would have been forgotten, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, Sky Stalker says, sounds like the guy is a total ass. Weirdly, YouTube promote the hell out of him all the time, Unbox Therapy. Um, 
I actually subscribed for a while and I found the videos to be a little bit slightly outside of what I wanted to see. It was mostly phone unboxings and stuff that I couldn't afford. So I unsubscribed and the YouTube thing says I don't want to see uh, content from this creator or whatever it is. Uh, but for months and months after that, I kept on getting the pop-ups in my feed. It's like, I don't want this. And I'd click on the dots, don't show me this subscriber again, or don't show me this content again. And again, it kept on popping up and popping up. It's like, I don't want to see this, but YouTube really do love Lou. And uh, actually that was another thing he did as well. He was supposedly supposed to be working with Google on the Stadia review and to show live footage of gameplay. He did the unboxing and has still to this day failed to do the actual gameplay video. So potentially he's in trouble with Google, potentially he's in trouble with uh, Patek, and potentially he's in trouble with his subscribers. So yeah, he's not having a great week. Uh, Glenn says he took a case, made it a tiny bit different and called it his own. The way he, he done it was shady AF. A letter says it's funny, that's what us writers do. Well, writers, filmmakers, content creators, that is essentially what we all do. Because most of the stories have already been told, all we're doing is putting a twist on it. Same with video reviews, anything that I review or have I done, unboxed, um, fixes, all that kind of stuff. Generally, someone else has done it somewhere already. You're just trying to present it in a slightly new and more interesting way or a different way. So I can kind of see where it's coming from with that. Um, yeah, it is a little bit on the shady side. And I think as well, because he is that popular, I think he's got 12 million or so subscribers of the tech community. He's the highest subscribed to as far as I know. So he obviously stands above the rest and is a target. So he should really be doing things a little bit cleaner and neater than the rest to avoid this kind of thing. But yeah. <laughs> Captain Me's Adventures says, I wonder if he went for a pizza with Prince Andrew. It's highly possible. He's a bit old. Yeah, British Newber said pretty much the same thing as what I found. Uh, every time I've seen one of his videos recommended, it's always stuff that I can't afford, which is annoying. A letter says life is on the shady side. It certainly is. Uh, Skystalker says YouTube is rather interesting. Peer review is a thing in the academic world. This happens on this platform too. Yeah, I think it does. It's, uh, that is quite a, uh, quite a thing these days. People like to report on what other people are doing. It seems there is, a, especially if there's like any kind of scandal or anything like this for me, I've only found out this evening. So for me, this is all kind of new. So that's why I'm talking about it. Generally, like today's headlines are tomorrow's chip paper, as I was always told. And it is, in a, in a few hours time or by Monday morning, this will all blow over and it will be forgotten and there'll be something else to concentrate on. Uh, Captain Meets Adventures says, uh, Mike, give us a conspiracy. Okay, here's a conspiracy. As this was all unfolding, I was trying to tell the people on the Discord about it. I posted three messages, one of them saying, um, what was going on and saying it oh, looks like Lou's uh, in trouble, he's done something wrong. As soon as I did that, after that, none of my messages would work. Apart from, if I typed in anything to do with uh, the words unbox therapy, conspiracy, Lou, or Patek in the subject line, it wouldn't post, it came up red saying it wouldn't post. I typed in the word nothing and something else completely irrelevant from it and both of those messages went through. So there's my conspiracy that because Discord uses the Google I.O. system for sending data, I reckon they blocked it so, they, so the bad news couldn't get uh, circulated around and start some kind of hype. So there we go. Uh, British Noob says, I don't think this will affect Unbox Therapy and he will say sorry and people will forget. Magic, uh, yeah, it does seem to happen a lot. But the weird thing is, he did a live stream um, for about 45 minutes and I'm sure this has happened already. I'm getting really bad deja vu. But yeah, basically he did a 45 minute stream saying how much effort he's put into it and then started comparing stuff from AliExpress and saying, look, this is what you get on AliExpress. This isn't what I've designed, but 
AliExpress and Alibaba are two completely different entities. So, yeah. Angry Doe says, I put in three and it went red. <laughs> Skystalk says, I need a video on Discord. Discord is really quite confusing, but also really simple at the same time. I I sometimes struggle to use it myself, but maybe, um, yeah, maybe I should do that. I might do some more videos on Discord stuff. Today, actually, because the, there's been these Discord issues today, our uh, video on Discord, no sound in chat, is uh, gone <whistles> skyrocketed, so it's all good. Well, how was that? Oh, cat's fighting. Do excuse me a second. I do like Coors Light. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. Good right, I think, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. So we've done all the unboxings, we chatted about stuff. Is there anything else I was gonna talk about? <clears throat> no. Right, so. To finalise, um, if you want to be in to win the GH30 headset, go to our Facebook page, Mike's Unboxing, comment on the video, all that kind of usual stuff, share it and all that stuff, and we will do the draw for that next Saturday, which will be the 14th, nearly Christmas, 10 days till Christmas that'll be. How scary is that? Bloody hell. Um, yeah, that's going to be bad. Scottish Stoker says, Coors Light is fizzy water. True, not real beer. How dare you. I don't know what, I don't know if, do we have the same stuff as you have over there? Because this is 4%. Which for a beer over in the UK, it actually isn't too bad, 4%. Most of them tend to be about four, somewhere up to five. <clears throat> Uh, Angry Dodge says, can I have a link to your giveaway? Uh, yeah, Kaf's going to do that now. Also, for those of you that are on uh, our Discord, I'll put the link to the giveaway in the giveaway section so you can check it out for yourselves. Um, also, in the meantime, let me know in either any of the videos I do during the week or even on this one when it's gone live, uh, what would you like to see me put into the test bench system? Ideally, like I said, I want to be going for the X570 platform. Um, but I'll leave the rest of it pretty much up to you. So put put your heads together and think about what you want to see in there uh, and what you think I should do with the case, apart from put laundry in it, which actually still might happen because that would be the coolest laundry basket in the house. Um, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, Bills and Coins says, I thought we were going to give away the headset today. Well, I only released a video on Friday, I think. Was it Friday I did it? Thursday or Friday. Yeah, so I, that wasn't really fair warning for those that want to get involved. So we will be doing the, the giveaway for that next Saturday. Um, yeah, I think that is pretty much it. British News says it wants to see Intel. Oh. Yeah, you'll be the only one. So let us know in the comments section below when the video has gone live, or even if you can do it now, then if you can do it now. But let us know what you want to see go into the, um, the build. And we'll have a vote on it possibly next week and see what we can do. I'm looking out for that X570 platform and everything that goes along with it. So uh, do you think it should be an NVIDIA graphics card? Should I go for AMD? Maybe 5700 XT possibly? Or let me know what you think in the comments. But anyway, that is pretty much it. Thanks for everyone who has stuck with us watching. Um, thanks for all the super chats, you crazy lot. And sorry about my rendition of the uh, fairy tale of New York. That was highly embarrassing. But you never know, I might do some uh, tuning up over the week. And next week, we might have a little blast of last Christmas if I can get away with it without copyright strikes. Um, but yeah, that is it. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you, and good night. Calf, say good night. Good night. There you go. Oh, come on. End stream. Good night, all.